All right, guys, it is time for us to go over the build that I have been running recently. Um, I guess we'll just jump right into it. Um, I'm going to try to remember to go over everything clearly. Uh, this is my first time uh, uploading a build uh, while trying to commentate over it. So uh, I'm sorry if I miss anything. You can just ask me in the comments if I miss anything or if there's any questions you have about the build and I will answer them. Um, okay, so I use the strategist set. All four. Um, of course, you run reds in utility for movement. Because movement, I'll go over it, but movement speed is very important. Um, all of my defense slots, they are all silveries. Deflection is also very important. Um, a lot of people have been asking me why I have been using shadow clad. Um, so my theory is kind of revolving around the uh, the whole having. Okay, so because you have an extra 20k something HP as opposed to uh, having the prestige set or whatever, um, you get more HP in this gear. So you can get away with using your defense boon, which kind of just covers your ass as far as having defense, you know what I mean? You don't really have to build defense anymore. You can just have the defense boon and use the standard defense you get from your gear, etc. But... What you don't really get a whole lot of is deflect, so you kind of have to build into it. Now, um, I only usually have about 10k when I'm not in combat, but having shadow clad kind of covers that up. Because uh, if you look at your deflect when you're in combat with shadow clad, your deflect chance, I mean your deflect number, skyrockets. It goes up a lot. And uh, that increases, obviously, your chance to deflect. And when you do deflect, um, it, it procs things. So we'll go over, I'll go over it a bit in, in depth if I remember uh, everything that I want to go over. There's a lot of stuff. Um, but having high deflect chance is important, I believe, on all characters. But again, I can only really speak for Guardian Fighters because I don't really play any other class. So all of my uh, utilities are reds. All of them. All of my deflects. I mean, uh, defense are silveries for deflect. And all of my offense are radiance for power. Um, some people use things like here. I have one of these. A cruel enchantment. Now you can put it in your offense for power and recovery, which is good. Having recovery. Um, is very good. It's highly underestimated. Um, it really allows you to just, obviously, just use your encounters and your moves more often, which, you know, you don't really need me to tell you that. But one thing that I can say is don't underestimate having high recovery, especially on a GF, where having your encounters, you don't really rely on at wills. You know what I mean? Like, like having other, playing other other characters your at wills kind of do more than as a gf but I, I understand we have a shield and we can you know stand there and just be a, a an unstoppable wall that's still you know doing some damage back like if you shift and left click or whatever but in pvp you're really going to just rely on your bullet charge and your into the fray a lot obviously your griffins but having high recovery also increases the amount of dailies you throw out. Um, which, you know, so a lot of people don't... It might be obvious to you if you know, but a lot of people don't register to them that having recovery increases your daily output. So, uh, that's what I run in all of my offense and defense and utilities slots. Uh, you can see which gear I am using now. I had this ring my first time ever doing, uh, I think it was normal Demogorgon, I got this ring, and I was going to salvage it, but it was a plus four, so I was like, you know, maybe it's good, whatever, whatever, 
and I used it, and it was garbage. I, I honestly, I, I don't think this ring is good, unless you use it alongside Shadowclad. When these two things, uh, when you have both of them, you'll just, you'll notice that you, you don't get focused as much, and that's because literally people can't see you as much. So, if uh, you find yourself getting ganked a lot, which happens obviously to me very often, this is my, my uh, solution to that. So, if I didn't have to worry so much about surviving or getting away, I would probably just use... I would say my... Uh, my rose gold duelist ring or an impel impenetrability ring. I have run my impenetrability ring quite a lot. Uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed if you have watched any of my previous videos or uh, uh, matches. I I think that this ring is very good, especially on a GF, especially if you have lion. Uh, having the lion mount is probably one of the biggest um, achievements you can have in this game for PvP. I mean for PvP, I mean for PvE also it's, you know, from what I've heard very good. But for PvP, having this lion, like screw them out, you don't even need them out. You just need this. This is uh, a big achievement. If you don't have it, it's all right. Like, like it's not make it or break it. You're just gonna honestly just you're gonna die more. That's just the harsh reality of it. Is if you don't have this, you will most likely die more. Um, you also uh, do not have to have a 4K stat bonus in here. For those of you who are you know just starting out or whatever, you don't need the best of the best right now so if if you're new and you're trying to find some kind of guideline to to build towards this is just an end goal this is not um you know step one is get the lion and then whatever whatever like it, you go you start small and you work your way up you know what i mean so having the valhalla set right now is very important in my opinion, especially since uh, y if you're using my build, you will have a lot of stamina. So, shielding against people will reduce their damage against you and increase your damage against them. Multiple things stack that way. So, my build is revolved around playing defensive, stacking up the damage, having them do less damage. Um, if they hit you a lot, you're going to deflect some of those hits. I mean, when my deflect chance, I mean, when uh, the number goes up, like, goes up way past 20k, like, borderline instantly. I mean, I, I have, like, a, what, like, a 45% chance to deflect, you know what I mean? That's almost half the amount of times you hit me. I'm going to deflect the damage away. So, we're going to go over boons, but in your deflect chance, there's, uh, like, other things that are happening. Like, when you... Uh, deflect something uh, uh, back to somebody, which there are multiple things that can proc. That can also proc other things, which I'm going to go over when I go through the boons. Uh, having wheel of elements. This is essential. Uh, if you're going to go for the Valhalla set, which I recommend you do, you do not need to get this to Mythic first. You, whatever you're using in these two, you do not need to get them to Mythic first. Uh, uh, Kessel's Severe is very good for G, uh, GF because it gives you power, armor, pen, and combat advantage bonus. Now, if you look at my uh, ability score history here, I put all of my points in Charisma. All of my points in Charisma. Um, I only put two points in Dexterity since I'm uh, running a lot of armor, pen, just without having uh, Dexterity up, I can put those extra points into Strength, which is just straight up uh, damage. So this is just increases numbers. I mean, this also increases numbers, but uh, differently. This also increases your deflect chance. So if you're going for a little bit more survivability, you can use more power in your build, less armor pen, 
um, more defense and, and less deflect and just uh, put extra points in dexterity um, and other things like in your feats which I will go over they just add directly to your deflect chance percentage when you uh, get things like that it does not add to your deflect number it just adds to your deflect chance because see my deflect chance is 34.3 percent right now it, which it ch everything changes in combat but right now it, it is that my stats here only give me 25.3 percent so that's almost 10 percent just from other things that are not from my deflect number so you gotta keep in mind that everything in in not only in this build but probably your build right now the the stats don't necessarily mean um, your percentages if that makes any sense uh, so one thing I would recommend also is using the great weapon artifact at least that's what I use right now um, you can swap it out with things like the controller artifact if you would like you can also swap it out with things like uh, the hunter ranger artifact this is another underestimated artifact in my opinion um, if you're trying to be a douchebag you can run rod of imperial restraint and put it in your active and that is really annoying uh, but I, I don't really think it's very viable since you're gonna want it you you're gonna want to have the heal from your waters um, also the lost mouth gives you power and armor pen and control bonus now um, when you have zero stacks of CC on you, you your first stack of CC is is going to be extra, which would explain why if you've been playing GF lately and you fought any SWs, when they get that first choke on you, it lasts forever. It lasts forever, especially if they put points in uh, control bonus. It will it will last a very long time. Now, if they CC you with that exact move when it's your third stack of CC, it will last way less of a duration. So, um, having control bonus is also underestimated. I know I don't have much, but I don't really need it. And um, that's because I uh, have enough numbers where I don't really have to control people. I can just um, usually just one rotate them and kill them. So, I'm... I'm not saying that you should only have 100 control bonus. I'm not saying you should have any if you don't want it. Everything is everything in this build is not use this build exactly. It's it's use this as a starting point. So if you don't like having so much defense and you would rather use the HP wound, which I would not recommend, that's that's just your style. That's fine. If you want to just use Azurs and Blues for defense and put them in your defense uh, and then use the HP wound that's you know that's that's up to you that's your personal preference there's nothing wrong with that um now another crucial thing that i want to go over here is the sandy's assault pants they have been around for a while so i'm sure you've probably heard of them if not um and you don't know how to get them or if you don't know anything about them first of all uh they will daze somebody if they hit you really hard um they're, they'll get a daze from your your pants however um, it can only occur once every 60 seconds. So, it, it pretty much means if you go into combat and somebody uh, procs this, um, like instantly, sorry, if somebody procs this like instantly, um, you're not going to get another use out of them for another minute. So, you know, some people don't really like that. They would rather have, you know, other pants that the they, they get stats from it all the time. Like the recovery pants, um, these ones, or uh, sorry, no, they're not the <laughs> the light steel ones. Uh, the other pants, I guess I must have discarded them. Uh, there are, uh, you know, there's a couple of different pants you could use. Uh, I like the uh, Sandy's Assault pants, just because, again, my build is made for just for me to survive, honestly, um, and and just kill people and and try to not die, since I, I usually have more than one person on me, so. If I, if I didn't have to worry about that, I probably wouldn't get a Sandy's Assault Pants. However, 
one thing that I will say is if you're very squishy, having these pants is very essential. Because if you're very squishy, then somebody, more people are going to be able to hit you for that amount of damage. There are there are matches where, you know, I, I don't really get too much use out of my sandies because people don't hit me that hard. So that'll come, you know, as you get more late game and uh, you get higher item level, whatever, whatever, higher numbers and stuff like that. Um, you'll get less use out of these. Uh, so this is really just to protect me against things like, you know, mini-me and Joker when they hit me really hard. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, some people like to use PvE uh, gear. I would not recommend it. Just because the uh, the bonus, the equip bonuses you get from using these, they're just... Um, they, they help a lot behind the scenes. You know what I mean? You don't really see... It's not like it's, it's adding more, you know, numbers to your stats so you can clearly see what it's doing all the time. So it's just kind of, uh, you have to feel it, you know what I mean? It's like, you just have to, you have to try different gear and you have to play with it for a while until you, 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 you know what that feeling is like. Like, when you see a change in your character or you feel that, you know, um, I didn't used to take this much damage when I was holding my shield up, etc, etc. So... You'll have to adapt, you'll have to change things, so I hope you guys did your winter stuff so you have uh, retraining tokens. So with that, let's go to the powers. Obviously, if you can put something that you use to have uh, four points instead of three, that's obviously better. Um, the crucial ones. Obviously, the copyrighted Hulk Smash. The Shield Talent. Griffin's Wrath. Fighter's recovery for when you have to use it. Knee breaker's not that crucial. Crushing surge, honestly, not as crucial. Um, first, you're going to probably want to do shield talent or into the fray for your first point. Uh, if you only have one point to make something uh, rank four. Um, then uh, Griffins. Griffins is a big one. You don't need a uh, Hulk Smash up to 4 right away, you don't need this up to 4 right away. You don't even need your at wills or sorry, your Crushing Surge up to 4 right away. Um, I would I would do Threatening Rush before Bull Charge if you only have that many points. And my reason being is because I don't see people doing this a lot, but if you're if you're watching this, you're gonna you're gonna get a little um, tip from my playstyle. I, I spam threatening rushes a lot. I don't know if you uh, if you have watched or have noticed, but I spam these a lot. And the reason is because it's not the the damage just from the threatening rush that I'm trying to do. Um, there are things that happen, like sometimes people clear marks out where you don't register or see right away that somebody just cleansed your mark off of them. Um, I don't know exactly what procs it all the time, but I have noticed, like, if you if you watch, I spam my, uh, my mark a lot, just to ensure that you, uh, that whoever I'm about to attack is marked. It's a very, it's very important that you always mark your target. You always also want to, uh, uh, mark them with Threatening Rush, uh, in addition to your tab, because it adds a secondary mark. You might not be able to see it. Um, but there's a mark underneath the big red X, there's another one, and that comes from your threatening rush. Uh, that you can use to attack people quickly. You can use it to gap close. You can, if you just got dazed by a TR, and you know he's about to drop a smoke bomb on you, um, or you just got courage breaker and you know he's about to drop a smoke bomb on you, threatening rush to somebody quick. You know what I mean? You want to use it, this this move, you have to be using this a lot. It's it, Especially if you run a slow build where you don't move very fast, threatening rush, it's 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 a gap closer. And it's and it's free and you have an infinite amount of them. And it's just, you just all you have to do is right click or left click, whichever one you do. Um, I would not put, if you're very, very slow, I would not put an additional point into your bull charge at 4 right away. Because, as you can see, it adds an additional 10 feet of knockback. So when you if somebody has no CC on them and you bull charge them, they're going to get, like I said earlier, 
extra uh, duration on the CC. Just like if you're getting choked up by uh, Scourge Warlocks and, and Trapper HRs, which are very annoying. This will uh, knock them really, really far, which is what when, when this mod came out, I mean, you could even see, like, if you go through uh, minis, uh, streams, or whatever, like, when, when this new mod came out, and PvP changes all came out, when you blow charge somebody, they went flying, like, like, way, like, way farther than they used to. Like, if you look at old videos, people go flying if they get their first CC stack from a bull charge. It's crazy. So, so, you're gonna want to make sure that if you bull charge somebody, you will be able to get to them quick enough for you to continue your rotation. So if that requires you having only three points in your bull charge, then that's something you might have to do just for the sake of um, being able to get to their body before they can do the animation of getting up. I hope that makes sense. Um, so rotation-wise, a lot of people don't think necessarily to do uh, let's say you're fighting an HR okay and he's a trapper which trapper HRs are you know to say the least um, they're special you know and when you get a split second to do something against that HR you have to act on it and sometimes bull charging does not suffice it doesn't like you, they, if they're shifting a lot it's it's hard to land a bull charge if a, if an HR knows how to shift one thing that catches them off guard is using this first indomitable strength is a very good initiator for a fight even if against another GF, you you run up to that GF, you 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 know you in, use your into the fray and you try to jump over him and you, you you land successfully, you land on the other side. You as soon as you get on top of him, you pop that daily. It'll target him, and now you're behind him, and it's two hits. And that HR, you know, they they might shift and and dodge the first hit of it, but it hits their on the on the second hit. This also works against TRs when a TR. Uh, you, you just get enough vision of them where you can do something, but it's not, a bull charge isn't going to suffice, and the animation of a griffins is too much, and, and, and using your threatening rush isn't really going to do a whole lot, you know what I mean? You hit that daily. You, people don't think to use this as much for starting a rotation. Everybody usually goes for the classic bull charge into the uh, daily, and then into the, uh, you know, bop them in, over the head until they die. Just try using a, a, a daily first. Just try it against the HR, against that TR, because what happens is when that TR rolls, if you catch him um, at the right time, he'll his roll will dodge the first hit of it. But just like the HR, when he lands to the spot that he's rolling to, and that uh, impossible to catch is no longer uh, procked on him, or he didn't, it's not no longer active on him. That second hit of this daily is still coming. So that could very well hit him and send him sailing. And then you could use your into the fray, run up there real quick and go, you know, pop his ass real quick with a bull charge. And then and then just bop him over the head while he's in the air up against the wall or whatever. You know what I mean? This daily is, um, it's very strong, guys. So just don't underestimate it. Just try, try using this first. Not all the time. You don't have to, but against the tricky guys. So let's go into the feats. Um, obviously, well, this might not be obvious to you, but to me, th these are pretty obvious. Um, increasing the effectiveness of strength by 15%. That's just gonna make you beefier. You're gonna do more damage. That's just, it's just that simple. Um, you need five points to unlock the next one, so obviously you put two points in here, which unlocks the next one. So you're gonna look over here before you. Just decide to put the third point in that one because you have OCD or whatever. So that gives you an additional 6% max hit points. Uh, this increases the effectiveness of armor class and defense by 15%, guys. 15%. So armor class. What is armor class? This little number right here. This just adds straight to your damage resistance percentage. 
Just like I was saying earlier, defense, this is giving me 32.9 damage resistance. How much damage resistance do I have? Um, pretty much 48%. There's a difference in the numbers there, in the percentages. Not all of your, your uh, percentages come from your stats. They also come from things like this, armor class. Armor class um, is not really uh, um, the first thing people think about when they think about like why am I why am I taking so much damage, right? They think about their defense. Armor class is pretty much defense. It's just a shit ton of defense, and it's just in a different stat, but it it, it meshes with defense to add to your de uh, damage resistance percentage. So Valhalla set gives you 8 armor class. If I look at this Baphomet Infernal Talisman, which is the Orcus set, which is the higher damage dealing set, gives me no armor class. My armor class right now is 32%. Book of Valhalla goes right up to 40%. Let's look at the difference. 11% damage resistance. 15% damage resistance. Not only that, but the set bonus itself reduces somebody's damage by 3% stacking up to 5 times. So that's an additional 15% less damage you will take from somebody as you are shielding against them. And from the set itself is also giving you an additional flat 4% damage resistance. I, I think Valhalla set uh, is definitely worthwhile looking at. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's it's not uh, thought about a whole lot when it comes to uh, DPS GFs because that's you know essentially what I am is a a DPS GF, but this is just a bulky version of that build, so I can take a, a few hits while I'm in there trying to kill somebody. You know what I mean? Because since uh, since there's so many buffs going around, like it's just hard to to play a glass cannon right now. You'll just die a lot, and and most likely. You're, you're not going to kill your target. Um, or if you do, you're just going to be going one for one a lot. So that's this build is... is This is the post-adaptation of that problem. So you'll, you'll make your way closer to this build if you're just going to go wing it. Eventually, you'll make it closer to, uh, to this build where you'll, you'll have less points in damage and more points in uh, uh, defensive things. So... When you guard an attack, your attacker br briefly deals 2% less damage. 2% because I only put 2 points in this. Um, I had... This is, you know, the amount of points that you put in for these 2 rows or columns. You're going to then put all 5 points in powerful attack. It's just going to increase the damage of your encounter and at will powers by 10%. Which, you know, don't really have... That's just self-explanatory. Ubiquitous Shield, you are going to reduce the damage effects of combat advantage against you by 25%. 25%. Now, combat advantage bonus. I have 2400 built, pretty much. So, this gives me an additional 10.2 combat advantage damage. Having these amount of points in my combat, I mean in my charisma, gives me an additional 10% combat advantage damage bonus, or percentage. So with 7 and 10.2, I have 17.2 extra damage from having combat advantage on somebody. Now what is combat advantage? Um, you, you, you clobber people over the head and you CC them. So when you CC them, you do additional damage just from CCing them, which is why I see a lot of people trying to use Trample the Fallen. Now, when a foe is affected by control powers, deal 5% more damage to it. Now, it's tricky because I, I thought that this um, was definitely something to run, to use. Um, it's not bad. Uh, I see some people using Trample the Fallen and Combat Superiority. 
when you look at it, when you when you read these two and you th and you think about them, like you, you think to yourself, wow, that's that's good, that's good. You know, I want to use combat superiority because it makes me it makes me do more damage and it makes me you know take less damage. That's great. Um, you know, trample the fallen. When I CC somebody, everything you do when a guardian fighter is CC. Your daily is CC. Your griffin is CC. Your bow charge is CC. Uh, and your lion doesn't do damage, but those are your three things uh, that you CC people with. So why, you know, why wouldn't you want to use trample the fallen? You know what I mean? It's just not as good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just not as good. That's the reason why you will always see me, usually always see me using Shield Warrior's Wrath, since you're defending a lot, you're, you know, you're shielding up a lot. Um, your, your Shield Warrior's Wrath, it stacks up a lot. Because if I look at this, I gain 1% increased damage. With these 4 points invested, I do 4% increased damage, stacking up to 5 times. So I'm doing 20% additional damage. Now this, when a foe is affected by control power, you do 5% more damage to it. 5, 10, 15, 20. Now you might be thinking to yourself, um, it would make more sense to be running this. Right, since it's always going to be at the 20% mark. I, I, I have people ask me that, and to be honest with you, um... Shield Warrior's Wrath is just better. It it's just better. Um, I don't really want to get more into it. It just trust me and use Shield Warrior's Wrath. You will find yourself doing much more damage. Shield Talent, obviously. Um, Shield Talent is very important. Having a lot of stamina is very, very, very important, guys. Having your stamina, obviously, you can see I have 2,100 stamina gain. That's kind of a big deal. Having a couple extra points in uh, strength gives you more stamina regen. Kind of a big deal. Now, if you look at my main hand, um, uh, equip power or whatever it is, my threatening rush damage is increased by 9.6%. So we'll just say 10%. So every time I spam somebody with threatening rush, Every tenth one is an additional threatening rush, right? Is that how that works? So I know, uh, 10%. So yeah, so if I do 10 of them, I will have achieved 100% of one um, threatening rush, pretty much. Now if I look at my offhand, my combat advantage bonus is increased by 395. Those are as close as I felt like doing for 400. I'm not going to waste more um, whatever these cube of augmentations or whatever to just trying to get the extra 4 or whatever because the max is 400. So that's fine with me. Um, it's up to you how much you want it. You feel like rolling to try to get more. Um, Combat advantage bonus. There are things that give you stamina regen. There are not as many things that give you combat advantage bonus. This is just straight damage, guys. This just increases your damage. Do this one, 100%. Also, have the shield talent uh, class feature um, set because this gives you 15% increase on your maximum stamina. Your maximum stamina. Nothing else gives you that besides shield talent and this just makes shield talent if you're gonna be using shield talent You might as well be using the thing that makes shield talent better, right? So Without a doubt you should be using these two class features um, So next let's go through um, So yeah having uh, Ubiquitous shield for reducing the combat advantage damage against you is kind of a big deal since you know a lot of people are building combat advantage not everybody thinks oh you know what I'm probably taking a lot of damage from the combat advantage you know not a lot of people think that so building uh, building this or, or putting five points in this will help you a lot now I see a lot of people split between these and I think that that's silly I used to do the same thing um, 
the reason I think that that is silly is because when you have a more percentage of your maximum HP as temporary hit points, you're gonna have that longer. Let's say you have a DOT on you or something. Um, let's say one tick of that DOT would eat 4% of that temp health away if you have 5% of your max hit points. So if it's gonna do 4% of my max hit points, that's going to leave me with 1% temp HP, which works no matter how much temp HP I have, I still have temp HP. So when I have temporary HP, I do 15% more damage when using this feat. So these two should both be at 5. Uh, jagged Blades, when you critically strike a foe, they begin bleeding. This is just... Um, it, the damage adds up, guys. It just really does. Especially if you're going to run Knee Breaker for those really annoying TRs. If you just feel like you got to run Knee Breaker. You crit on a Knee Breaker, the amount of damage that, that just bleeds over time. They don't they don't know it, but they're already dead. They don't even know it, guys. Dragon Blades every time. Every time. Uh, staggering Challenge. Obviously, you're going to be running Griffin's Wrath. Um... Use this because you're going to be using that. Um, this also increases the damage of your knight's challenge. So if you uh, have a paladin problem and you just need to uh, fire buff Hulk smash um, knight's challenge and then just you know try to wallop him into the ground, you're going to want this um, tactical superiority. This flat out gives you five percent more damage. Just just from having this. So that alone means you're gonna you're gonna be using this. Also combat superiority. If you feel like stamina is not a problem and you can get away with having um like no stamina time of holding your shield up, you can use combat superiority, which will give you an additional five percent damage increase on that, which is why I said trample of fallen's not really worth it. Um because uh combat superiority just outperforms it. Uh, obviously you're going to put one in this. I don't need to go over that. Um, plate agility. This is like what I was speaking on earlier. This just adds directly to your deflect chance. So this is like having ghost deflect stats. So if all of your percentages, like uh, the, the differences between what your stats give you and what the, your actual percentages are, if you if your stats reflected the actual percentages, you would have way more stats than you see in your uh, in your character's loadout. So just keep that in mind. Like you, you really have more stats than what's visible number wise. Um. So then the next two um, feats you're gonna put all of your points in is this one, which increases the cooldown on your uh, encounters, which is like again like having phantom recovery, right? Uh, at least on your cooldowns. So that's also something that um, adds to your stats, but you can't see it necessarily. Um, and this one, which is like uh, ha pretty much always having Trample of Fallen on, which is why I suggest, uh, you know, using this, because it's, it's like having an additional class feature on. Um, when you control somebody, they take 10% more uh, or bonus damage for three seconds. That's just in general. So if I slam somebody, I bull charge somebody, and then mini bull charges somebody, um, his bull charge does more damage because of this 10% bonus damage just because I have this feat. So if he hits him, hits the guy really hard, increase that damage by 10%, and that's that you get that just from this feat. And everything you're doing is 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 CCing. So you know you're gonna help your team a lot with that. Uh, all right, so now let's go to the big part, which is boons. Um, obviously, since everybody is using their defense boons, you're gonna want to run armor pen. Uh, having a lot of armor pen is is really important. Very, 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 very important. I see a lot of PVE GFs come into uh, PVP recently with you know 11k crit. And, and, you know, 38k power or whatever, and, like, you know, 2 or 3k armor pen, maybe. That's, that, it, you can't do that, guys. You cannot, I'm not saying having a high crit is not good, 
I'm saying having low low armor pen is not good. So if you're using that power boom, I know you want to increase that power as much as you can, but if you want to increase your damage as much as you can, use the armor pen boom, please. You'll just you'll you'll see yourself doing more damage even though you you feel less of a man because you have lower power. Um so um I'm greedy, I just always use this. Uh, for increased movement speed, you can use these for PvP. Um, Alright. Now, a couple of these I changed recently. Just because I was trying some new stuff out. Um, and what I kind of found is that I like running this a little bit more right now. Um, instead of the movement speed one, which I know it might seem minuscule. But... It's a couple of things that I changed. Um, it's not just this one that gives me more movement speed that I changed. So I run the uh, power and crit. And then the uh, the one that gives me uh, extra power when somebody hits me. So again, this is one of those things where it, it works with your play style. I like to stand there with my shield up. Let somebody blow their whole combo out on me. Let them, you know, walk up to them so they think I'm gonna bull charge them. Let them drain out their own stamina out, and then, and then, you know, then pop them real quick. So, you know, because they're gonna be hitting you the whole time, so they're they're gonna be decreasing their damage against you and increasing your damage against them. So they're like they're essentially uh, effing themselves. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, this, you know, you, you don't really choose those. Uh, I want to run through these quick, but. I don't at the same time because I feel like if I go too quickly, people might, you know, they might, I might uh, leave room for question on something that if I just went into detail, you wouldn't even have to ask the question. So I guess I'll just talk about this a little bit. Power, deflect, action point gain, um, and elven furiosity, which is when I strike somebody, I just can deal 20,000 uh, damage, arcane damage. So this works um on a lot of things guys this uh faith thistle when you deflect an attack you deal up to 3000 damage to your attacker when striking a foe you have a chance to deal up to 20,000 arcane damage so let's go to here really quick when dealing damage, you have a chance to deal up to 20,000 necrotic damage over a few seconds. After this effect ends, the target receives 25% less healing from spells for 10 seconds. When dealing damage, I have a chance to proc up to 20,000 damage. When somebody hits me, and I deflect it, which again, is going to be almost half the amount of time, I'm going to be doing up to 3,000 damage back to them. Just from this one boon. Just from this one boon. So, this can proc this. Your boons can proc each other. Which, you know, that might sound... Um, well, that might sound dirty if you have the right kind of mind. But that might also sound, you know, funny. Um, but it's, it's a serious thing. It really is. Because... If you're going to be running Shadowclad, your deflect is going to go through the roof, guys. And if you're going to be running all Silveries in your defense like I do, your deflect is going to be pretty high. You're going to have a pretty static uh, deflect chance. So, people will be, you know, hurting themselves a lot just from trying to kill you. So, again, it's like them effing themselves, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's just the best way I could put it. So, power movement... You know, crit strike movement, I'm a power whore sometimes, so I don't, you know, I have enough crit. I don't really have to do the whole crit strike thing because I have uh, the Valhalla set, which gives me an extra 1k, um, and I put things into the crit, so, um, you know, this is this is fine. This is honestly fine. My crit chance is 21.8. When I go into combat, you know, I, I have a chance to, uh, you know, I, I look and my, com my uh, crit strike is well over 10k because things you know step in and you proc things and things buff your stats or whatever and you you know your crit chance goes up you know a little bit whatever that's that right now one out of every five bull charges is going to crit you know what i mean that's pretty good 
that's pretty good, especially since you have three, uh, or, um, what looks to be four griffins, um, you know, usually one or sometimes two are gonna quit. And that's a good, that's a good, you don't need to go more than that, you just don't. Um, regen over lifesteal, you're not gonna be lifestealing. Building a lot of regen is underestimated right now because building a lot, I know that they, they reduce the amount of incoming healing, right? So you don't heal as much, right? But if you put more points into healing, then you'll, you'll heal, heal more, which that, you know, that might sound self-explanatory that or like, you know, unnecessary to even say, but think about it. If you put more things into healing, you will heal more. So even though you have less healing overall from what they have changed in PvP, if you put more things into your healing, you'll get some of that back. And that goes a long way. Because when you're fighting somebody, chances are they probably don't have a whole bunch of heals. You know what I mean? Okay, if you're fighting somebody late game, we, we put a lot of things in, into healing. Which, you know, that's why I have a lot of things into healing. Because we don't... You know, we have to stick around and we have to stay in the fight. So we have to, you know, try to stay as healthy as we can. That's something that uh, newer people don't really take into consideration is really not being afraid to put things into regen or healing. Um, you'll notice, you know, sometimes um, when, when somebody's late game, you can tell when they don't have a lot of regen. You can tell when they don't have a lot of healing, self-healing. They just, they can only fight for a short duration of time. If they get chunked really bad, they back up and they don't come back. They, they go and they try to, they go to another node. You know what I mean? Like, they just try to get away from the fight. So, having some regen goes a long way right now. Resistance, ignore. This is essentially armor pen. This is phantom armor pen, just like I was talking about earlier. Shadow touch. This is extra damage. So, um, you know, that's what, I, you know. You have a lot of things that are proccing damage on people, so running shadow touch is, is a big deal. Uh, this gives you a shield, um, you know, that's just the best option out of these four. I would just run, take the top one, you don't even really have to go through them. Um, for a GF. Yeah, having the shield is better. Um, some people might think that this is better, but this will help you when you really need it. This could, uh, this is just gonna, it, it might not be there for you when you need it. You know what I mean? This is guaranteed to be there when you need it. Uh, so the next Icewind Dale, I did the whole bottom, which is combat advantage bonus. This is crucial. Very important, guys. Very, very important. Use this. Um, stamina gain, also very important right now. You will have a lot of stamina with this build. Um, I use a little bit less stamina gain since I have a, a lot of max stamina. Um, you don't need as much stamina gain since, uh, you know, you can just hold it longer. Uh, crit severity over recovery. This is, this one's kind of personal preference. The reason I chose crit severity is because um, I hit people pretty hard. You know, chances are you probably don't have all of the things that I have, which is okay, guys. It's it's okay. Like this again. This is not my build. You don't have to you know, copy it exactly. You don't have to uh, have everything that I have. Just use what you have and whatever you have. Make it the way that I have it. Just for a starting point. Then you can use the, that retraining token if you feel like you need. You know, more stamina, whatever. It's up to you guys. It's, it's, you know, I can't force you to run exactly my build. Um, you increase your power based on how much stamina or guard you are missing. So, if I look here, as I hold my shift, my power is just going up. Look, that's simple. There's also one that does it for your recovery as well. Um,. Avalanche, when uh, damaged by a foe, chance to uh, gain a stack of av Avalanche at 20 stacks. Taking damage will clear the stacks and deal up to 15,000 damage to nearby targets. You get hit a lot. Um, this this is just really, if you're going to be standing in the middle of everybody and getting hit, 
or um, if people are going to be, you know, chasing you or ganking you a lot. Avalanche is just kind of um, a self-peel thing. It's not really peel, I guess. Peel would be CC, but you know what I mean. It's just, uh, it, does, it, it bursts. It's a big burst of damage. I mean, so 400 power, uh, 1600 HP. Again, power is good. Crit strike, HP, crit strike is good, because when you remember when you crit, you want to have a decent amount of crit, guys, because when you crit, you're going to proc Jagged Blade, which is a bleed. That's kind of a big deal. That's that's the whole reason I put any points in crit, to be honest. I understand that crits hit harder, um, but it, you could just take everything from crit and, uh, and put it in other things and just hit hard all the time and know what your numbers are going to be. But because of that bleed, that's, that's what encourages me to put more things into crit. Um, that's, again, that's personal preference, it's up to you, but if you want to use my build, this is how I do it. Uh, Comet Advantage Damage Bonus increased by 10%. Again, this is a phantom stat. My Comet Advantage Damage Bonus stat, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, stat is 2,400. Uh, Comet Advantage Damage Bonus. That's 10.2. Or transport anyone who can pay the fare. No questions asked. Um, okay, so, yes, this increases your damage, uh, which one? This one increases your damage by 10%, your combat advantage damage bonus, uh, by 10%. Um, control effects will now have a 5% shorter duration when applied to you. This is just, if you run all of these, it's like having a, uh, lesser elven on, you know what I mean? You can also use this if you feel like you need more stamina, um, that it's not that big of a deal between these. It's it's just Better not that big of a deal. This one, because so both of these are very good. Um, gain 10% damage versus demons. This doesn't really even matter. But I chose this because you do more damage to it. Not that big of a deal. Going to power, obviously. Deflect. Um, you could also do crit, but remember guys, deflect, 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 deflect. Armor pen, regen. That's good. Power, deflect, armor pen, regen. Those are good. Now, this is the important part, so please pay attention. You feel very inclined to put all three of your points into one of these. However, um, it it pays more it pays more to put one point in uh, three different ones because if I look at this by putting one point into this uh, boon I gain ten percent increased control strength. If I put one point into this I get five percent increased crit severity, which Again, this is kind of like a phantom crit severity. is kind of like a phantom crit strike um, stat. However, this increases your crit chance. This does not increase your crit chance. It just increases how hard your crits hit. And putting another point in this is 10% increased incoming healing. If I put all three of my points into Dragon's Grip, my second point only gives me 2.5 and my third point only gives me 2.5 increased control strength but my first point gave me 10 so it doesn't pay to put the second and the third one in there when I could put a second point into this and get 10% increased incoming healing so I got 10% increased control strength 10% increased incoming healing and 5% increased crit severity all of these stats put together equals 25 percent just looking at those numbers alone you get more percentage um, of stat so putting all three points in this only gives me 15 percent putting one point in each of these gives me uh, 25 percent which is a, it's a big difference 
you know, that's kind of a big deal. Um, lifesteal, you don't really need that. Since you have Fighter's Recovery, you don't need lifesteal, guys. You have Fighter's Recovery. It's guaranteed lifesteal. You do not need lifesteal. Um, okay, next one. 400 incoming healing bonus. You know, it's just better than lifesteal severity because you're not really going to lifesteal. Once in a blue moon, you might. But you'll always be healing from something. So whether it's an insignia bonus or it's from just from using your crushing surge, you heal every time you hit somebody with a crushing surge. And if you if you hit them with the third strike, it, it's a it's a much better heal. So this incoming healing, this entire stat applies directly to your crushing surge at will. So keep that in mind. You will always get use out of this as long as you are using that at will. 400 uh, additional combat advantage bonus. Again, that's a big deal. That's just flat damage, guys. Flat damage. This is, again, having like uh, a, a lesser Elven if you use this along with the other one. That's 10% decreased uh, shorter. I mean, uh, decreased uh, CC on you duration. <laughs> Sorry, that came up funny. Uh, Alright, so your stamina regen uh, regenerates 10% faster in combat. Um, you gain action points 3% faster. People hit you hard. Um, you shield a lot. You don't need this as much as you need this because having your shield up and taking damage increases your action points. So, and it's not like, you know, you just get to your max uh, action points and then, you know, you use your daily right away. You kind of wait for an opening. You play it patient. If you play it, if you have my play style, if you know how I play, I play it patient usually. Unless I'm just, you know, either in rage mode or I'm, I'm a little salty. I feel the press of the, the heat, the oven's on its way over to me, you know what I mean? Cook me up and, and bake me out. I like having the extra stamina regen. I think that, uh, it's worth it and increase control strength and the reason I put additional points into increase control strength uh, when you have that uh, that CW who's running uh, unparalleled elven or whatever you know what I mean and they put all their points and their feats and their boons into decreased uh, or increased uh, uh, control resistance you, 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 you have enough to hit them with one bull charge and maybe one griffin, but you don't, you can't really get two or three griffins. Because they, um, they will shift away and, and you won't be able to, uh, to get them. And it, you're just, you'll have to wait for your next rotation. I will bring you back from the brink. Fair weather today. You okay, uh, this time of year. 300 power, 2k max hit points. Power over defense. Um, 400 regen, 2,000 max hit points. You're not going to be life stealing, so you'll always be regenerating. Crit strike and hit points over recovering hit points. This is up to you. If you if you you need the recovery, do recovery. Don't be don't be afraid to build recovery and see what it's like to have you know 2.5k recovery. Even if you, you lose a little bit of power, you lose a little bit of armor pen, you lose a little bit of crit or whatever you, you're sacrificing for it. Try using some more recovery. Just try it. Because at the very least, even if you can't do a lot of damage, you're still gonna CC somebody. You're still gonna you're gonna bull charge them and when they're flying through the air, they're useless to their team. They're they they can not kill your team. You you can protect your you know, when when you got a, a another GF that, you know, just bull charged your cleric and he's gonna go one rotator, you bull charge him real quick, you know what I mean? And ha sometimes having just a little bit more recovery is the difference between having that bull charge ready or not having that bull charge ready. Uh, so for the fourth uh, boon in here, you're either going to want the third one to the bottom or the bottom one. The bottom one gives you a uh, crit strike. Uh, this one gives you recovery. I would recommend using recovery because you're not always going to get um, things from from your crit strike, but you are always going to get uh, uh, things from your recovery, like it's always 
your recovery is always working in your favor. Crit strike is not always working in your favor. So having crit strike is a gamble. Having recovery is a safe bet. Um, control resistance and max hit points over lifesteal severity, obviously. Stamina gain uh, over incoming healing. That's, you know, personal preference if you, you know, if you only have an elven battle or you don't have shadow clay or whatever, um, you can use the, uh, the incoming healing if you want it, that's fine. Um, Icy Wrath, when taking damage, you gain up to 2k bonus damage on your next attack. You get hit a lot, um, so this will just make it, uh... Chances are you're going to have this ready by the time you, you unleash your combo on somebody. So this is just going to add 2k bonus damage. Um, you can also use this. Um, however, keep in mind that if you have a lot of stamina, your shield is going to your stamina is going to be going down slower. So you're going to be you're going to get to the 2k mark for your recovery much slower. So it might not be worth it to go for that. Although you look at it and you go, oh wow, 2k. You, know, you have to have zero stamina to get that 2k recovery. Um, so this one, when you kill a foe, you have a chance to deal with the two the, the, the enemies. You're not, maybe you, you know, you're not always going to be able to kill whoever you're trying to kill. Sometimes it's that kind of match. This will just always give you uh, 3,200 hit points. So that's kind of a big deal. When you deflect an attack, you deal uh, 6,000 damage to your attacker. Um, when striking a foe, you have a chance to gain a stack of icy chill at 10 stacks. Your next attack clears all stacks and releases a burst that deals up to 10k damage to targets close to you. So this along with, um, what is it, Avalanche or whatever from uh, the first campaign or second whatever. Um, people hitting you, they're going to deflect, but as you can see here, I split up here, I, I, you can do uh, two points in this and one point in this, not really that big of a deal, um, I just wanted to do, do it this way, where I put two points in this and one point in this, I would definitely suggest doing one of those two, um, you don't need the, the middle two, um, this, just putting one point in this gives me a chance to do uh, up to 10k damage to targets close to you. Targets. So that's multiple people in the middle when everyone's ganking you, whatever, whatever. This and the other one blow up and you, and you deflect a lot of attacks, you know what I mean? Like people, it, it, the damage stacks up, guys. The damage stacks up. Uh, this, you know, recovery and hit points or life stealing hit points, you're gonna want recovery. Twitch strike severity, incoming healing bonus. This one's up to you. It's personal preference. If you uh, if you need some more heals, you can definitely use that. No problem. Um, when you kill him, any other chance to? Um, uh, definitely this one or a despair for sure. Uh, the anything that anything that CCs anybody, you want it. You want it. Um. This is not bad. I would definitely say using uh, this one if you run as much deflect as I do. Uh, and it, this is this is pretty much just having another free insignia bonus uh, for your mounts. That's just pretty much what this is because there is a, a bonus that gives you that when you deflect an attack, you uh, regain up to a certain amount of HP. So if you have both of those, when you deflect an attack, it, it makes the attack do far less damage to you, especially if you shield it, and you can uh, get a shit ton of heals from it, so somebody hitting you could heal you if you outheal the damage that they do. So here's another thing, here's another instance where you're going to not want to put all of your points into one boom. Uh, I could break down the numbers, it's very easy. 500 uh, deflect, 800 max hit points. 500 power, 800 max hit points. I only have two points, so I'm working on getting my third. I'm going to put the third one in defense, obviously, because these three, you don't really need them. Uh, regen, eh. I don't need it. You you can use this if you would like the extra regen. That's fine. Um, 
especially if you're going to be doing a little bit more of a tanky build because you can't do quite the damage that I do yet, that's fine. You can definitely uh, do a more defensive build, uh, in which case I would do... Uh, I don't know. If you have the defense, you can do the regen. If you have the regen, you can do the defense. It's up to you. It's not that much of a difference. It's only 500. So, but if I put all three of my points in one of these, I get 1,600 max hit points. Right now, I only put two points in here, and I already have 1,600 hit points. And the reason being, I got 800 from this one and 800 from this one. So, I, and I also got 500 power and 500 deflect. That's 1,000 stat. And then that's uh, 1,600 max hit points. And I only put two points in here. So I'm going to... That's that's essentially the same amount of stats as having three points in one. I've gotten from having two points, one in different uh, uh, different uh, boons. So if I... My third point, I'm going to put in probably defense, to be honest. Just because um, I, I don't really need more healing. Uh, so let's go over the top ones. Uh, impenetrable jungle. This will root. This is like having a terror enchantment uh, bonus that roots people. So if you're running terror enchantment and you're running this, um, you, you, you're just really annoying. So companions, I guys, uh, to be honest, I don't know anything about companions. I don't do PVE. They don't. They don't do nothing for you in PVP. Uh, there is this. Uh, I wish worked for PvP would be great. Increased damage against prone targets by 10%, but it's PvE only. So don't you don't really have to worry about your companions. I'm sure and everybody watching this probably knows more about companions than I do, anyways. Um, okay, so for here, whatever you have, just if you use it. If you have lion, use lion. If you don't have lion, it's all right. Use just whatever you have. If you don't have anything, it's also okay. It's not that big of a deal. It was a long time that I had no lion, and I still whooped ass, just like I do now. Um, here, you're gonna, you know, you can get an epic mount that gives you, uh, you can also get the ball, uh, the gas spore, uh, mount, which gives you 20% increased stamina regen. It's a big deal. That's a big, big deal. That will, that alone, along with, uh, shield talent, you don't have to put any points in stamina gain. You could, anything that's in stamina gain, you can just forget about it. Um, and you can just put into other stats. That's totally up to you. I prefer just being able to switch. I, I put stamina gain in, in other things so that way I can switch between uh, my power or armor pen depending on what kind of targets I'm fighting. I also have 4k defense, I guess, from the carpet. I don't use that. Maybe I should for PvE since I'm thinking about trying to do some of that. Um, however, whatever you have in here, you can use it. Um, you'll probably want to use power if you're going to be using your armor pen boon. Now, if you're obviously you're watching this, you're going to be trying to work on your GF, so you're going to want at least, at least 11k armor pen. You will see yourself doing a lot more damage with a lot more armor pen. I know that might just sound self-explanatory, but if you just took, uh, you know, if you had, uh, 30k power and zero armor pen you're going to do more more damage with 15k power and 15k armor pen that's just how it is so armor pen is your friend if you got power and you're doing power and you, and you don't you don't melt people as good as when you use armor pen then use armor pen that's fine there are plenty of mounts that give you uh power or armor pen that's 2k you can also get this one that has 1k power 1k armor pen i don't know where i got that one from i forgot uh, that's also fine. Not that big of a deal. Obviously, if you have 4K power, but or uh, 4K armor pen, but you don't have the 4K power, which I'm sure you probably do not have the 4K power option, use the 4K armor pen. That's fine. If you don't have the four or the two or the uh, the power or the armor pen, whatever 2K you got, just just use it. It's either going to be power or armor pen. Uh, now let's go into here. Obviously, I'm not running Wanderer's Fortune. 
Hold on. You can use this. Uh, let's see, regal, regal. Oh. Now, when I control an enemy, I gain 5% combat advantage damage for 10 seconds. That's just more damage. While at full uh, action points, you gain 10% of your armor pen as power. So, let's, let's do this real quick. I'm using a lot of power. I mean, a lot of armor pen. I'm using 12k armor pen right now. So what did that just go up? Almost 2k or something like that? So... That... Just gave me, uh, what? Like 2k... Um... Power. That's like having a, uh, a mini brutality ring. Half a brutality ring. If you run, um... Fair weather today. You rarely see the lake so classy this time of year. More armor pen. Technically, if I switch to 4K armor pen, I have, what, 28.2 right now, right? So this should have gone to 32.2. But just from switching to 4K armor pen, I, I technically it does my my power number went down. However, I have more power. Not, I guess I don't. My number, my power number is lower. However, that has given me more power. So I technically have more stat by using the power. I mean the armor pen. Uh, 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 mount bonus. So, by using the armor pen mount bonus, I technically have more stat. So, I can, if I look at this, what I can do, so I have 31.9k right now. So, if I get rid of that, 31.8. So, so, If I switch to here, go back to armor pen, 28. Now I run in here, I you know use these really quick, both give me power, 31.8, and 16 instead of 12. So it's keeping the same amount of power, pretty much, by using these two, and running armor pen. This, this is a solid, uh... Solid setup. 30k, 15k. That's 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 more than enough, guys. You know, 25k and 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 13k. That's fine. You know what I mean? Like like you, you don't want all of your stat being in power. Um, you want a lot of armor pen, and you also want a decent amount of power. Gladiator's ghoul. Um, this is. Essential. There's plenty of uh, the the gas spore mount also has this. So if you if you do plan on getting that, um, just for the uh, just for the bonus in here. Oh, sorry, not in there. In here, um, you can also use it in here to give you gladiator school, which is when you move faster at high stamina and regen stamina when your stamina is low. So. This is how fast I walk with this much stamina. So, you know what, just for now, I'm going to get rid of this. This is how, how fast I move with this much stamina. Now I'm going to stand here, I'm going to hold my shield. I'm going to get rid of all my stamina. Watch how slow I move. Watch as my stamina goes up. I will run faster once it gets to what about 75 percent or something like that look at that did you see that see how much faster i'm running now 
Now that is something that will always work in your favor because when your stamina is high, you run faster, and when your stamina is low, you regain stamina faster. It's something that is always working in your favor. It's a big deal. Uh, Assassin's Covenant. You uh, lose percent of your defense, deflection, and lifesteal, and gain the combination of the lost stats as power. So, as you build defense, you know, by using my defense boon, watch. 30? Okay, hold on. Let me just make sure nobody's near me. 31k. Switch to defense. That's almost 1k power. From using my defense boon, that adds an additional 1000 power. Just from using this. Now my deflection, that means that when I get hit, and my shadow clad boosts my deflection stat my actual deflect stat up to 20,000, 30,000, whatever that's a percentage of that is getting sucked out of deflect and pumped directly into power so this is why if you inspect me or if you look at my stats when I'm not in combat which I understand this works the same way with everybody but you have to keep in mind, you know, when, when people look at the stats, they go like, Oh, I don't understand, like, where are your stats, whatever, whatever. But I still whoop ass and I take names. And I, and I live to, t to tell the tale, you know what I mean? I, I live through a lot of really crazy situations. And, um, and, and I, I, you know, I get a lot of kills. That's just, that's just how it is. So, you know, people can hate on the build. People can say whatever they want. It works. My build works. It works for my play style. And it does what I designed it to do. Um, when I use an artifact, you receive a buff. This is just for pretty much survivability. So whenever I use an artifact, my recovery, my movement, my action point gain, and my stamina gain are increased by 10% of my power for 15 seconds. So as of right now, with no boosts on my, uh, on my power, that gives me 3k recovery, 3k movement, 3k action point gain, and 3k stamina gain. That's a big deal. That is a very, very big deal. I would highly suggest using this. Um, that helps with anything. That helps with you, you in, in, in 1v1s when you pop that wheel. That helps with everything. That gives you more recovery and more movement when you pop that we that wheel and you jump into the fire buff. You, uh, you, know, you use your rotation on somebody. You have 3k more movement right now just for using your fire buff. Just for popping your 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 uh, wheel of element, you got 3k more movement speed. So that's going to allow you to after you bolt charge that bitch, allow you to run in there, gap close, and then hit you daily better. So so this it, it will help you be more efficient. I'm sure that 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 the Black Ice Warhorse is not the only mount that uses or that has this. Um, so something else you can do if you uh, are uh, going to do a 1v1 Cavalry's warning when you use a mount combat power you receive a buff so when I activate a mount combat power I gain an increase of 10% to my power my recovery my armor pen my crit strike my defense my deflection my regen and my lifesteal so pretty much when I use a mount combat power uh, I just get injected with steroids that's what that is. So all of these things increase, but guess what? This is still in effect. So this is sucking from the defense and the deflection and the lifesteal that this gives me and converting that into even more power. And this is giving me power flat out. And uh, my armor pen from here, uh, my armor pen goes up. My defense goes up. My deflection, everything goes up. It's a big deal. 
It allows you to kill your target if you have a lion. It you, you you use your lion before your rotation. You 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 mark the guy. You hit him with your threatening rush. You get the double mark on him. You let him hit you. Let him hit your shield. Let him uh, decrease his damage against you and increase your damage against him. And then you you pop the lion. Then you do your full rotation. Now, um, usually, usually, what you, you what you want to do ideally is most realistically you're gonna jump into your fire artifact. Then you're gonna uh, after you have the guy, you have everything set up where you know he's hit your shield, he's he's set up your uh, your shield warrior's wrath damage, whatever. Um, then you're gonna jump into your fire buff. You're gonna you're gonna make sure he's marked, obviously. Um, you're gonna hit him with the lion, and then you're gonna do your into the fray. And then if you can, you want to hit him with a daily first. Um, that's you know you don't have to, but it's ideally you want to hit him with a daily first uh, because obviously after you hit him with a daily, you're gonna have no action points. So. Um, you are going to gain your action points from doing your combo, as opposed to doing your bull charge, and then doing your, your, uh, your daily, and then doing your griffins. However, you do also have to keep in mind that you have, uh, Berserker's Rage, so when you do have full action points, you, uh, gain, uh, an increase of my, uh, to your power from your armor pen. So, it's kind of... Um, up to you, uh, which, which, you know, rotation you want, uh, most people are just gonna jump right into the bull charge, but there are benefits to doing different things, uh, in different combinations, um, a lot of people, they just think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just bull charge, whatever, whatever, like, some people don't even mark their targets, which, you know, it, it's very important that you mark your target, it's very important that you, uh, you double mark your target with your threatening rush, and it's also pretty important that if you want to rotate somebody who you know is very beefy, that you don't just jump on them and try to wail on them with everything you have right away. You have to, you have to use your, let your, let everything buff up, pick your timing, and and play it patiently, and uh, and you should be able to burst whoever you need. Um, I hope I have gone through everything. Uh, I don't think there was anything else I really wanted to cover, uh, unless it's slipping my mind. Uh, item level is not that big of a deal. It's just not, you know, item level, your item level could be low, and, uh, you could still whoop somebody's ass who has way more high item level than you have. I fought an, uh, an 18k paladin, I think it was yesterday or the day before, um, and it was not that hard. I watched a, what, 14 something K. Uh, I streamed it. I don't remember what the guy's item level was. Uh, a CW, he was like 14 K or something like that. Killed the 18 K paladin. A paladin that was protector build. Killed him. Won the 1v1 against a paladin that was 18 K item level. So item level is not everything, guys. It's just not. It's, it, it really is not everything if you're new. Um, and you, you know, you're, you're decently there, like, let's say you're 5 out of 10, as far as, you know, like my, where I'm at right now is like 9.5 out of 10, and where, you know, where I'm gonna be is out of 10, where, in, in a half more, and in comparison from having nothing to that, you're at a 5, what you can do is just use your Hulk Smash, jump into the fire buff, you know, double mark somebody and whale them real quick. You know what I mean? Just blow everything you got on 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 somebody. You know what I mean? You will do you, if you run similar stats to what I have, and you do everything uh, as much as you can closely to what I got. Uh, you will you will see that you will do a lot more damage. Uh, and I hope that if if this build helps you, or if this this video helps you at all, um, that you let me know so that way I can. Uh, uh, let me know in the comments so that I we uh, that way I can um, know what to what to talk about for future builds for future videos because I have more builds. Um, it's just the, any feedback that that you might have uh, for me, I would appreciate to read. Uh, so I, I am asking you to leave some kind of comment um, that's somewhat constructive. 
If you were wondering where this banner is or what this banner, uh, where it came from, it came from the Zen shop, the cleric pack, I think it was. Um, in the packs, there's a cleric one in here somewhere, and in there has the banner that is this banner. Um, so I guess with that, I'll end the video. I hope you guys like uh, my boots. I caved in and I got them. So now, uh, uh, me, Joker, and Minnie, we all pretty much look, look inseparable. I'm waiting on them to get the banner. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But, okay. Bye.